the NFP becoming uh, the first party to take the IEC to court, and this is over a dispute in the electoral outcome in the area of Etumbe. This is in Guazul Natal. Sitting with me in studio is Christopher Sbisi, the interim secretary of the NFP. Mr. Sbisi, thank you very much for your time. Why are you taking the IEC to court? Well, we should make it clear now. I think it's a high time that we expose what uh, IEC has been doing even for the past years. Uh, according to the report from our party agents, we won what one and what three. But now, to our surprise, in terms of results outcome, we only have six words, but we, mo we almost won seven words. So now we have engaged IEC and we have even lodged and filled the, uh, I mean the Section 65 form, but they are not willing to take our objection or even to listen to it. Yeah, but what convinces you that instead of the six wards that are clearly have been won by the NFP, why are you convinced that the seventh one you have won as well? What evidence do you have? We do have evidence from our party agents, even the result slip. Remember that when counting is being closed, you will get the result slips confirming the results. But what our party agents have as, I mean, in terms of results is not what uh, IEC is producing at Edumbe. So we have requested a recount from the local IEC, but they don't want even to do the recount. So that is why we are forced now to go to court. Maybe it's only the court that will tell IEC to do recount because what we are only asking is recount. So your party agent has the result slip and yes. it is from which ward? Which ward are we talking about? It's ward one. Ward number one yes. in Edumbe. Yes. All right. Now they have the result slip that you say proves you've won the ward. Now that result slip, you're saying that you want it to correspond with what the IEC has, and they're refusing to do that. Is exactly, it? they are refusing. What happens now? Well, I know you're going to court. Have you actually gone to court, or is there a specific time that you plan to go? No, to court? leaders there uh, by 12 o'clock definitely they will have lodged their the complaint with the court there. Yeah. Yes. Let, let's talk in general terms. In KZN in general, how have you done as the NFP? Yes, you were basically prohibited from contesting the 2016 because of uh, whatever issues there were. Uh, you are now contesting uh, 2021. How do you think you fared? Uh, considering the backgrounds that we are coming from, we're not there in 2016. But now we are standing nationally, we are standing at number eight. As you can see the results there, we have, uh, of now we have more than 50 councillors standing there. So for us, looking even our financial background, it was not easy at all. And while in the middle of the process, even our president passed on as she was a crowd puller, people there in rural areas, they trusted her so much. Yeah. But we are satisfied with what we have. Getting more than 50 councillors, I mean, for us, it's a biggest achievement. Yeah. And we think also that will make our party to be stable again. A big talking point in KZN, at least today, and I suspect for the next couple of days, is Etegwini municipality. You're showing there, not very strong, but your general comment about the ANC coming under 50 percent in KZN. Do you think that result was expected given the kind of troubles that Etegwini has seen? Yeah, I think for them the result was expected because uh, there, were, there are a lot of troubles and a lot of problems they face there. But again, thanks, I think it, we, I, we, it's confirmed now we have one councillor there. So again, under those uh, conditions, we have done well. Although we are not satisfied with one, at least we are expecting more than 10 councillors. But thanks, because we will be represented also in that big uh, metro. How difficult has it been for the NFP to campaign in KZN? I think it was just the day before election day, Karen Mjlece, one of your leaders, in fact, he is the secretary of the NFP, bloodied. The wife apparently also uh, attacked. How has campaigning been given the kind of violence that always follows KZN during election time? Uh, 
you see our oppositions, they thought that we will never come up. So now, once we come up again, so they said now they say trouble is coming. Mm. So they will do whatever, more especially in the Zululand region. They will do whatever they will do to disturb our campaign, to disturb our visibilities in those areas. But it tends to... Why is that? Why do you think the NFP would be a target? And who would target you, by the way? Unfortunately, on a national television, I cannot declare who was targeting us. But it is one of our opponents. I mean, our presence in Zululand will make a difference. So remember, they even prophet that we'll never survive. To tell you today, in Zululand district alone, we've got three seats. Nongoma, it's hanging. So we might uh, go there and govern. It's only Ulundi that uh, the IFP has won outright. But the other municipalities are still hanging. And our presence in those municipalities will create a problem. And our presence in Zululand district will create a problem. So they want to make sure that we don't exist. They have want to make sure that NFP will no longer be available in Zululand. But thanks to our supporters and our uh, members, we are there and we are back in the competition. When you're saying you can't say who was targeting you on national television, but you're happy to talk about why these people would want to do this to try and uh, hobble your campaign, so to speak, you, you're welcome to not give us a name, but are you able to give us a political party that you believe stands in the way? of the NFP progressing in No, it's not a secret. IFP is standing on our way. It's not a secret. Has your secretary gone to the police station to open a case against those that he says uh, targeted him? Because the IFP actually responded through its spokesperson, Mkulego Shengwa, saying that this was actually as a result of the internal wranglings within the NFP. Yeah, I think he has gone to the police station to open a charge. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how far is it going. So we will hear from him how far are they doing. Yeah, yes. but how do you respond to what the IFP is saying, that you claiming a day before the election that your secretary was assaulted by IFP people, was you trying to shift blame from your own internal problems within the NFP? No, unfortunately, we don't have those kind <clears throat> of internal problems. You see, we have had so many squabbles among ourselves, but we have never laid even a hand on each, other, on each other. No one has laid a hand in our members. So why it was going to be at Ulundi specifically, in the area which is known as the IFP stronghold, yes. that is impossible. Christopher Smithy, thank you very much for your time. He is uh, the interim secretary of the NFP and uh, we were uh, fortunate enough to get a hold of him here at uh, the Results Operations Center and uh, you heard him confirming that uh, they are indeed uh, on their way to court and this is to challenge the outcome of uh, Ward 1. This is in the area of Edumbe. They're saying that the IEC basically shortchanging them there. So they become officially the first political party to go to court to try and challenge at least one of the outcomes in a ward.